Biden and Trump are both taking trips to the southern border on the same day this week, on Thursday, in what's being described as dueling visits to the border. Now, it should really be described as wannabe theater kids engaging in performative BS as the migrant crisis continues with no end in sight because, well, I mean, you have Trump who literally squashed a bipartisan effort to reform immigration to respond to the migrant crisis. And then you have Joe Biden who largely ignored the issue until it became a liability for him politically. Now all of a sudden he's pretending like he cares deeply about the matter. He could show how he cares about the matter by providing the resources that various cities desperately need in order to adequately respond to the migrant crisis. But in Colorado, for instance, they were approved to get some federal funding last spring and they have yet to receive the money. And that is, by the way, according to the mayor of Denver, who we'll be hearing from in just a moment. Meanwhile, a new Gallup poll shows that a growing number of Americans see immigration as the most important problem facing the United States. So let's get to the results of this Gallup poll. If you look at this chart that they provided, you'll see that just last month in January, 20% of respondents felt that immigration was the most important issue. Well, that number has now jumped to 28%. Other issues have remained largely unchanged in public opinion compared to last month. Concerns about government come in as the second most important issue to Americans, followed by the economy in general and inflation. Now, currently 57% of Republicans, up from 37% in January, say immigration is the top problem. Independents show a modest uptick from 16% in January to 22% now. While there has been no meaningful change among Democrats, it was 9% for Democrats in January, and it went up just by 1%, 10% in February. And an increasing number of Americans also see illegal immigration as a threat. So 55% of US adults, up eight points from last year, say that large numbers of immigrants entering the United States illegally is a critical threat to US vital interests. The prior high was 50% all the way back to 2004. So this is definitely hurting Biden politically. Uh, I don't know how he intends to respond to it, considering a solution from Congress in the form of legislation is not gonna happen. Republicans refuse to play ball now that their daddy Donald Trump told them to do nothing in response to the migrant crisis. And so Biden is now mulling possible executive orders. I don't know what those executive orders might be, but we have covered that previously, the possibility of executive orders, and they will be challenged in the courts. So we'll see how this plays out, but it's not looking good for Biden. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members, and then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. First, the visits to the border I always find to be so meaningless. I went and looked at a piece of land. What and that did you what good? Oh, I talked to the border agents there. Do you not have a Zoom? Do you not have a phone at the White House? You can you're the president, you can talk to those guys, and I hope that you are talking to those guys from time to time uh, to see how things are going or your team is. So this just as Anna pointed out, total theater. I hate that the press plays into it and makes a giant big deal out of them looking at a patch of dirt. Uh, and then the Republicans on their hypocrisy, they're like, oh, Biden won't go to the border. Biden won't go to the border. Now he's going to the border, and they're like, ah, oh, he's just a publicity stunt. Okay, so do you want him to go or don't you want him to go? Which one is it? Make up your mind, right? And then, uh, but then that's, those are all minor, minor issues. The giant issue is the Democrats didn't bother coming up with a solution. Biden's been in office over three years. What are we doing? Why don't you have your own answer? So now they're scrambling to blame the Republicans because the Republicans voted down their own solution. Okay, that's true, but why were you relying on the Republican solution? Why were you desperate to go back to what Trump was doing? Do you see how bad that looks politically, let alone policy wise? That you're like, oh, they wouldn't let me do Trump's policies. You look like a total loser. You're begging Trump to let him do his policies on your watch. I, there's no worse optics. That's why his polling is now down to 71%, unfavorable on immigration. That is, that's unbelievable, 58% disapproval overall. 
this is an epic nightmare. Unless you live in Washington, in which case Biden's got this. Now keep in mind that at this point, elections are really determined by independent voters, right? So obviously Republicans who had no interest in voting for Biden to begin with are gonna vote for Donald Trump. But what about independents? How do they feel about the notion that this huge influx of illegal immigration into the United States is a threat? Well, apparently, a larger increase from 40% to 54% of independents believe that this is good, this is a threat to America. Far fewer Democrats, though, view illegal immigration as a critical threat. But that percentage is also up from 20% in 2023 to 29% currently. And why did it go up, both for Democrats and independents? Because the Republicans started busing them to the big cities. And so when they had to deal with it, they were like, whoa, this is a problem. What did I tell you on day one on this show? That's how you know who you can trust. I said, sorry, but the busing is a good political idea for the Republicans. You might hate it and you might have problems with it, but politically it's gonna put the burden on the Democratic blue states and cities and then they're going to howl. And that's exactly what happened. That is exactly what's happening. So let's talk about three different areas of the country that are currently dealing with an influx of migrants. They don't have the resources to respond to it adequately. And the local communities there are suffering because they're dealing with budget cuts in order to come up with the money to shelter migrants that have now come into their, their cities. So I'm actually gonna start with Colorado. So a Colorado town known as Monument has voted unanimously to declare itself a non-sanctuary city. And part of the reason why is because it's about 50 miles away from Denver. Denver is really struggling with not having the resources for the migrant crisis. And so they're reaching out to neighboring towns to see if they can help in any way. And this is part of the way that Monument has responded. We are not a sanctuary town and we want nothing to do with this. Denver, like Chicago and New York City, has in fact been inundated with migrants. Then I'm actually gonna jump ahead to the last video here, featuring the mayor of Denver, Mike Johnson, because just recently he had to explain to the people of Denver what type of services need to be cut in order to come up with the funding for migrants. Let's go to that video. We are announcing today we will make some changes both to our services at DMV and to our services on Parks and Rec. Uh, what that looks like for DMV is we are no longer um, taking vehicle registrations in person. We will move those to online. We will start rotating weekly DMV closures starting on March 4th. Our central spot at Tremont will stay open uh, permanently, but our other satellite spots will rotate uh, closing one week at a time. We will have folks that are hourly workers that will have fewer hours. If we reduce your hours and you're an on-call worker, that's true. We will have on-call workers we won't hire for the summer we would have hired otherwise. We will also uh, have to make some hard decisions around reducing services for Parks and Rec heading into this summer and spring. Uh, that means beginning February 20th, we will reduce hours uh, at our rec centers. Our regional centers that are seven days will come back to six days. Uh, those sites that are six days will stay at six days, but will reduce hours. We are planning for the entire 2024 budget, so we believe we have to make it through this entire year. And so these these changes will be in effect until we can get back to a balanced budget. We think it will take us the 2024 year. He also said in the same press conference that the federal government had promised to provide resources to Denver last spring. They're still waiting on that money. So there are other parts of the country. I wanna to go to El Cajon, California. So El Cajon, California, close to San Diego. And they have now officially run out of money for their migrant welcome center, which helped to process migrants. They've been told by Border Patrol that they should expect between 700 to 1,000 migrants a day. And as a result, the mayor there, Bill Wells, says that migrants will be released onto local streets in a state where close to 200,000 people are already living on the streets. So let's go to that video and hear what he has to say. We're already at capacity, our, yeah. our schools, our hospitals, everything. And where are the migrants being placed amid this shortage of shelter space in San Diego? They're not being placed anywhere. Uh, they're being okay. dropped off at three three locations. One is at the border. One is in our town. One is a, a, up north at Oceanside. And uh, we have been given no information about how to handle this crisis. So we're just going to have to 
in, in some senses, wait and see whether or not they're going to dissipate and go to the airport and fly to other parts of the country, or whether they're going to end up on our streets and under our overpasses, which I kind of think might be the case. But we're going to have to wait and see. And at that point, we're going to have to react and try to avert a humanitarian crisis. And finally, I think that it is a giant mistake for anyone to call out individuals who are concerned about the migrant crisis as racist. Because if you're paying close attention to what the black community in Chicago has been saying and what they are enraged about, you would understand that they're having the very few resources that they had to begin with taken away from them as a result of this crisis and as a result of the federal government abandoning them and not giving them the resources necessary to adequately respond to the migrant crisis. So one more video for you so you get what I mean, let's watch. This is disgraceful, this is Black History Month and I see some of our beautiful ladies having on these African garments. You don't show your blackness by how you dress. You show your blackness of how you vote. And some of you voted for sanctuary. If anybody needs sanctuary, black people need it. All this asylum seeking lie, all this about refugees that no, no, no. What's happening is they're emptying out the dregs of their jails into the United States, into our communities. They're junking up our country. And yeah, we feel some kind of way about it because it's our country. And I want you to know, Brandon Johnson, I understand what Breakmore's saying about we still own the plantation. But what you're looking at right now, this is what a free Negro look like. And I'm telling you, we're going to get our city back. We're going to stand for our people. We're going to get them out of our communities because they don't deserve to be there. It's 68,000 Chicagoans that are homeless. Majority of them are black. Our black kids are running rampant out here, record carjackings, record auto theft and robberies. Downtown has three to four illegal families on every block begging for work and selling Kit Kat bars after a billion dollars was spent on them. Where is that money? Where is the money for the South Side and the West Side communities? That should be, that should be the argument. So if you're wondering why some black voters have chosen to abandon the Democratic Party, you should listen to what their concerns are instead of speaking on their behalf, Cenk. Yeah, those are real people. Uh, so I see a lot of, you know, fakeness in politics. Uh, so when you see a real person, it jumps out at you, right? So for example, the second lady, she was not saying positive things. Uh, she was speaking, and I heard her whole speech, and she was speaking out against Latinos to the point where I got super uncomfortable. And now we're worried about racial tensions between blacks and Latinos. And she was starting to sound like Trump saying, hey, they're sending their dregs here. That's what Trump says, it's actually not true. So there are some gang members that have come here. And so people are very concerned about that, etc. But is Mexico or Venezuela or someone else purposely releasing their prisoners or the mental patients? No, they're not purposely doing any of that, right? But people are beginning to think that because it's out of control, right? And the majority of migrants are not violent and they're not causing crime, okay? This is not meant to go after migrants. This is mostly to go after the federal government under the leadership of Joe Biden, which has largely ignored this issue until it became a political liability. Yeah, the third person was describing like a very realistic scenario of what's happening. And I don't know that anybody in Washington understands this. She said there was three to four, well, let's call it undocumented families under every overpass, right? Right. It's things along those lines. And they were all in the streets, they were all begging for work, which makes sense because they can't, they can't legally work. They're stuck there, they don't know what to do. And they're all like, I, the people in power have, don't live near real people at all. They don't, nope. And, so, and these folks aren't going to Beverly Hills and Gross Point and all those places, right? And so now the anger builds and builds, and now it builds among the Democratic base. So meanwhile, has Biden proposed a non-Trump plan on immigration? Like legitimate, serious question. I haven't seen it. He's saying we should do the things that Trump did. Oh God damn it, the Republicans won't let me do the Trump plan. Where's your plan? Where's a humane, decent plan? that handles this in a way we don't cut off all asylum seekers, but actually gets a hold of the situation. I, I just, it, it doesn't exist. And then where's Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris was supposed to be in charge of this. I mean, has she made one proposal 
Has she thought about it for a minute? So let me jump in because it is true that Biden a few years ago put out how he wants to respond mm -hmm. to immigration. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, one of the provisions that he proposed was hiring more immigration judges in order to process the asylum seekers quicker. So you don't just do catch and release and then you have migrants waiting five to 10 years to have their case heard before an immigration judge. But he just kind of put it out there and moved on. Yeah, that's so Anna's absolutely right. And we gave him credit at the time. I now retract that credit <laughs> because Biden's all talk, he never delivers. He never actually follows through on these plans. And by the way, I wish he was more talk as well. What do I mean by that? If you believe in your plan on sending in more judges, which is a plan that I agree with, then why don't you go and publicize it and then put pressure on the politicians, including your own party members and including Republicans, so that it and then try to actually pass it. So when it comes to the kind of talk that could help put pressure on to pass a proposal, he never does it. But when it comes to empty talk of plans he's not going to do, he's full of it. Oh Yeah, we'll send judges. I mean, I'm not gonna do anything to send the judges. I'm not gonna try to pass it. I'm just gonna sit on my ass. But oh yeah, we'll send judges. Hey, everybody give me fake credit, fake credit. And we did, we gave him fake credit. Sorry, I retract it now. He didn't follow up on that at all. So if you're again wondering why Democratic voters are reconsidering their support for the Democratic Party or for Joe Biden. Again, please listen to the voters. Don't demonize them as people who you know, inevitably are gonna support Donald Trump or are going after Biden because they support Donald Trump, which some of you have been doing with me. I don't know how many years of anti-Trump commentary I need to provide for you to understand, I don't support Trump. But I don't, I don't know how many Americans have experienced their quality of life get better under Biden because he made a lot of lofty promises and didn't do anything about those promises after he got elected. What happened to the public option? Yeah, guys, that's I a great example because you know why? Because at least paid family leave, higher minimum wage, they had in the bills for like a nanosecond before they spiked it. Um, public option is such a layup. Again, 70% of Americans agree, a huge percentage of Republicans agree. It's just an option. It doesn't. You don't have to buy that as a healthcare option. It's like, like a tiny step towards Medicare for all, but it isn't Medicare for Not all. It's a close. tiny step, right? And very popular. Joe Biden never even proposed it. He said on the campaign trail that he was in favor of it. Then he got into office and he's like, oh, yeah, of course I'm not gonna do that. Hey, drug companies, insurance companies, send me the money, send me the money, okay? And he took tons of donor money. You know how many times the press wrote about it? Zero. He's filthy corrupt. I'm sorry. Oh, you know, I break, I'll break your heart, right? Trump's corrupt because he takes tons of money from Adelson and other people. True, 100% true. He's enormously corrupt. Biden is also corrupt. He also takes giant donor money and doesn't do anything he said. So it's same with Nancy Pelosi. Democratic hearts breaking. Oh no! Please don't tell us the truth. Please, we thought they were angels. He just ran out of time on the public option and his own immigration plan and every other promise that he made. But hey, don't worry, the defense contractors are gonna get the 14 billion for Israel, the 60 billion for Ukraine, all the defense budgets. That's the only thing that passes anymore, defense budgets. So, oh, and don't, and he did regulate the price of drugs on one drug out of tens of thousands of drugs. That's true. And every propagandist that works for mainstream media then pretended that he lowered drug prices. Right. When in reality, he protected the drug companies by making sure that 99% of their drugs are not regulated. So it was supposed to be all drugs at first. And then it went to only 10 drugs. And then we find out that the 10 drugs that they were going to allow Medicare to negotiate were all about to run out of their patents and cheaper generics are gonna come out soon. They're such liars. Like so, but don't say that, don't say that because it'll help Trump. You know what would hurt Trump? If you actually were a great candidate and you had great policies and you actually tried to implement those policies. Trying to get everyone in media to lie on your behalf after you didn't do the job is not the world's greatest strategy. Although to be fair, 90% of media does help him do that. And, yeah. and when you have a show like ours that doesn't, 
Everyone in Washington gets enraged. Why are they still saying things that are true? Somebody make them stop. Sorry, we're supported by our members. And as long as our members support us, you're never gonna get us to stop.